I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of Walking Through the Bible, a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, please go to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Diesel for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 149th lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday, we covered Genesis chapter 43, verses 15 to 25, discussing how Joseph invited his brothers over for a meal. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Christ under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today, we're going to begin with Genesis 43, 26 and read through verse 34. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 43, beginning at verse 26. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with them, and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out. And controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn, according to his birthright, and the youngest, according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. When the brothers arrived in Egypt, we found yesterday that Joseph had arranged for them to dine with him. The brothers were worried that this meal was simply a pretense for Joseph to enslave them because he thought they were thieves. Joseph's steward, however, assured them that they had nothing to worry about because God's providence had taken care of them. So in today's reading, we find Joseph returning home. The brothers present their gifts and bow themselves to the ground before Joseph, again fulfilling Joseph's dream. Joseph asked them about the welfare of their father. When last they met, Joseph knew that Jacob was alive, but Joseph also knew that Jacob was old, about 130 years old by now, and could have died in the interim. The brothers say that not only is he alive, but he is well. He then sets his eyes upon Benjamin and asks them if this is the youngest son that they spoke of. Joseph greets him as, my son, a greeting that showed tender, almost paternal affection, seeing as how Benjamin was 16 years younger than himself. Emotion over seeing his brother for the first time since infancy was too much for Joseph, and he had to excuse himself to his bedroom so that he could cry in private. After composing himself, Joseph returned and requested that the meal be served. According to custom, Joseph, because of his status, ate at his own table, while the Egyptians ate at their own table because it was an abomination to eat with the Hebrews. According to my research, this had to do with the fact that the Hebrews ate of the meat of the cow, an animal that the Egyptians viewed as sacred. When the brothers came to their table, they were seated by age, which astonished them, since they thought they didn't know the man of the house, that man being Joseph. Now you might think that maybe Joseph, had he not known them, could have merely guessed their ages. Well, in normal circumstances that might be true, maybe based on height or facial features. Remember, these brothers were born within a seven-year period, and some of them born merely months apart, so telling them apart by physical features would be next to impossible. In fact, not knowing their ages, the chances of seating 11 men in birth order is 1 in 40 million. The brothers were fed from portions of Joseph's table, but Benjamin received five times as many portions. Perhaps Joseph was testing his brothers again here 
by seeing if they would be jealous that their youngest brother received the most. The scriptures don't reveal to us why Joseph did this, so we shouldn't be dogmatic that we know what the exact reason was. All in all, though, the brothers had a good time eating with Joseph, something that must have certainly been a pleasant surprise. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow for the question and answer edition, as well as the weekly sermon edition of this podcast. This week's question is, what happens to us when we die? Well, the sermon will be titled, Hatred Stirs Up Strife. We will continue our study of Genesis, the Lord willing, on Monday, beginning at Genesis 44, verse 1. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or email them to answeringtheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, Lord willing, tomorrow for our weekly question and answer edition, as well as the weekly sermon edition of this podcast. Goodbye for now, and have a great day. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord.